All right, so I used to work for a nonprofit that wanted me to engage youth in a community-based city planning process. Now, city planning is kind of a hard sell for 14-year-olds, so I thought, okay, how can I possibly make this more engaging and interesting for them? And I thought, zombies. Teens love zombies, right? It's a no-brainer. So I only had a couple weeks, and I wanted to do the scenario where there was a zombie apocalypse, and we needed to make our city the best it could possibly be to up our chances of survival. And the organization I was working with said, absolutely not. Looking back on it now, it wasn't the best idea I've ever had, but they didn't say no because it wasn't a very good idea. They said no, and they told me this because it wasn't serious enough. The reality was that they didn't want to just engage youth, they wanted to engage youth on their terms. They wanted youth to think about city planning as they thought about it. And they worried about what our investors would say about zombies in the middle of our city planning, but that is beside the point. So I was really frustrated by this. I was involved in a lot of leadership programs in college. I was that kid. And they all seemed to kind of share this idea of this very, very serious leadership. And this seemed super counterintuitive to me because we were designing programs for the kids like me, the ones who were going to get involved no matter what happened, no matter how boring this program was. I was going to suffer through it because it was going on my resume, damn it, and I didn't care what I had to do to get to that point. But if we were really living the values of these programs that we're in, shouldn't we be designing them so that they're engaging as many youth as possible? Shouldn't we make them so that the people who maybe aren't as likely to get involved right away on their own are more likely to? Because they probably need the skills more than anybody else. So I'm lucky to work now for the Harry Potter Alliance, which doesn't shy away from unusual methodology. And I was looking at the hero's journey in preparation for one of our programs. And I noticed it looked a lot more familiar to me this time around. And I finally realized it reminded me of the social change model of leadership development, something that had been etched into my brain in the 300 leadership programs I was in. So when you take the hero's journey in the social change model and you kind of overlay them, something interesting happens. They match up a lot better than you would expect a literary model and a social change model would. There were a couple people around to kind of witness my mental breakdown as I was like opening up Photoshop and overlaying things and rotating and holy crap, what's happening? What is this? And that's a good representation of my face. But the more you think about it, the more it actually makes sense, right? Maybe we see this particular process repeated so often because it's a reliable creator of leaders. We see it in Harry Potter and in The Hunger Games where characters like Harry and Katniss are asked to consider their values, to make a commitment to those values, to find a group and a team to work with and work effectively with them, and ultimately to become better citizens of their world. And I see it every day in the youth that I work with in the HPA as they experience their own calls to adventure. They are kind of taken out of the world they know and into a new world of activism where they have to think differently. They find a team to go on this journey with them and ultimately bring everything they've learned back to their communities. 60% of the youth involved in our program say that they're first time leaders and activists. And they often say that the connections to Harry Potter and to stories is the thing that finally got them to get engaged. That should not be very surprising to the people in this room because so many of the hot topic education issues we're talking about, game-based learning, digital storytelling, they all have narrative in common. Narrative is the thing that we use to engage learners in the classroom. So why aren't we doing this more in leadership education? I propose a new model of leadership development, one that brings together the hero's journey and the social change model to make explicit the idea that characters like Katniss are developing leaders themselves. One that asks young leaders to think about their calls to adventure, their Hagrids knocking down their door, to consider what kind of hero identity they would want to develop for themselves. Would they want to be a Mockingjay or a Batman or a Captain America or Agent Carter? And to make a conscious commitment to becoming more like that hero. One that emphasizes the importance of mentors like Dumbledore and Gandalf, but also the importance of peer mentors like Harry and Hermione and what they do in Dumbledore's army. And makes clear that the diversity of skills and backgrounds in teams like the Avengers and the Fellowship made those teams stronger, not weaker. And ultimately one that gives permission to youth for them to put their acts of service and leadership on a scale of epic love that's comparable to the characters that they know and look up to. We need to stop being so afraid of protecting this mythical sanctity of serious activism that we fail to engage the youth who need it most. They're not, not taking these issues seriously, they're just learning how to be heroes. Thank you. Yeah!